And hello, everyone. Wow. We are here. We are here at KPG Global because our God is just so amazing. Our God is so awesome. Our God, right now, I, I am just enamored with the Lord right now. I am totally whacked by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. But I just want everybody for a moment, like, because my heart is just soaring right now. I just want everybody just to just settle down right now. We're about to go into the word, but I want everybody just feel your breath, feel your heart. I want you to receive the love of God that is enveloping the atmosphere right now. I want you just to receive it more than anything. And yeah, I know I, I, I'm going to get to teach it for a minute, but right now, let your heart be filled with life and love. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, glorious master. All right. We are here. And I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys are excited for today's Paga because today we have a new series. Today is the official start of the teaching DNA. My gosh, I am so excited for this. And I'm telling you, God is about to do something amazing. I mean, who here is ready for DNA? Who here is ready to know more about, not only about the Lord, but about yourself as well, who God has made you to be, what God has truly done for us. I am just so excited right now. So right now I'm going to open in prayer and then we're going to dive right into this. So I am truly just so excited for this. You guys have no idea. I promise you, once you learn this, your life, your ministry, everything about you will be forever changed. So I hope you guys are ready for that. I hope you guys are excited and expecting that right now. Right now, just say in the chat, just say, Lord, I'm ready. Like, just, just, like, just say that. Just say that so, so that if the Lord whacks you, <laughs> you can't say, God just whacked me with something. No, you... You were ready for it. You were expecting it. I hope you guys are ready because I am ready right now. And so right now, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, we just gave you the highest praise, which is hallelujah. And right now, Lord, I just pray right now that you allow me to decrease so that you may increase. Anoint my lips of clay that I may be an oracle of God. Let nothing I say be of earthly wisdom, be of everything of heaven and the spirit. I pray right now, Lord that you will touch the people's hearts and minds right now to prepare them for what thus saith the Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will um, remove the thorns and remove the thistles. Let their hearts be fertile ground. Let this word fall on good ground and let it take on deep root and let it produce much fruit so that they will lack nothing in their destiny. Oh Lord, I pray right now that you will possess me by the Holy Spirit right now. Oh, Lord Yeshua, be lifted up right now. Hallelujah. And Lord, I just pray, open the gates of heaven and release whatever it is that you have for your people today. I decree and declare now that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is at hand. I stand in my office as king right now. And I speak into the lives and destiny of all those that are here. Lord, have your way, be exalted, be glorified now and forevermore. It's in Yeshua's mighty and precious name we do pray. While the presence of the Comforter, closest companion of the Holy Spirit, and my prayer partners and friends said with me, amen.
Amen and amen. All right. Now let's dive into this. So today is Divine Nature Activation or DNA. Learn the truth of who you are. See, the thing is, and this is what we're struggling now in this generation and in this time, is that people have no idea who they are. And I'm talking especially the body of Christ. You have no idea who you are and what God has truly done. Because the thing is, if you truly understood your DNA, if you truly understood the divine nature that God has instilled and placed inside of you through his son, Yeshua, by the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, you would never look at your life the same again. It's impossible to realize who God has truly called and made you to be and be average, to be like, I, I, I'm, I, I hear these people all the time. The greatest things that I hear people say is that they don't know how special they are. They don't know how valuable they are. They don't know what God has truly called them to be. You see a lot of walking dead people all over this world. They do things, they just go about life, but they don't have an aspiration, a dream, a vision. They they can't imagine what else they're here to do. They don't even know their actual purpose. But we going to show a little bit today. This series, Divine Nature, I hope you guys are ready to dive in here. I have to give a little background. So we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1, 17 to 18. I'm going to lay a pretty good foundation for this first, because I really just want to dive into this. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. And here you will find these words. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Does everybody see that word inheritance? You must understand that there is a reason why the Bible uses familiar terms. And by familiar, I mean family oriented terms. It calls us heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. It says by the Holy Spirit, you have the spirit of adoption in which we can now call Abba Father. I hope you are understanding this. We can now call God Abba, meaning Father. It says those who are born of the Spirit or who are born from above, those who are led by the Spirit, who walk in the spirit are called what? Children of God. So you must understand why the Bible uses those terms. And, and it's because of things like this, the word inheritance. See, this is the part that a lot of people in the body of Christ, you do not understand. Is that you don't understand that you don't understand the true hope of this calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You have no idea what that actually means, nor do you know how to walk in it. Paul is saying that when that as he's praying for them, he's praying that they'll come, that they will have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And the knowledge of what? Of who he is. Why? Because when you understand who he is, it helps you understand who you are. Your identity, your purpose is in him. 
So if you understand what is in him, I hope someone caught that. When you understand what is in him, you will understand what has been given to you. Do you understand that? So it says the eyes of your understanding. So it's not just understanding in the head. It's talking about your heart, the eyes in of your understanding and the spirit being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, not the hope of your calling, <laughs> not the hope of your calling, the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory. See, you must understand, and I want everybody to look at me as I say this, you must understand how to receive the riches of glory. Otherwise, you will just be going from glory to glory. See, the problem with the body of Christ is that everybody knows that scripture, we go from glory to glory. But they miss Ephesians says there are riches of glory. So instead of just going from glory to glory, I can get hit with a whole bunch of glory. And that's the mindset that the body of Christ has is that everybody has to work or push or propel um, um, to get after it. We're in one realm of glory. Okay, now we got to go into the other realm. If you continue to do that, do you understand that God has layers of glory? It is not just, I hope you understand that. He has layers of glory. So if you keep trying to do it that way, go from glory to glory, you will never reach the fullness of where he actually is. That's why you need Yeshua. That's why you need to know your inheritance because there is an access point to where you receive the riches of glory. And I know a lot of people are probably like, 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 what does that mean? Riches of glory. What does that mean? In, in inheritance. What does this mean? All right. Let me go back because I want y'all to see something. Now, this revelation is not my, this revelation, um, that I'm about to share next comes from a man, um, a spiritual father of mine that had a trip to heaven and he talked to, um, someone of the saints. He, he, he talked to, um, someone, um, in heaven and this is what they shared with him. The difference in power. So he said, um, this is what the saint told, um, the man of God. He said, as Christians and the body of Christ as a whole, we have lost much of what we gained in the early church mentioned in the book of Acts. With this statement, he pulled out this huge, powerful gun looking like a .45. Now, that's the one at the top with the gold. That's a big and powerful gun. And said, this is what the church used to have. Then he pulled out a little .22. That's this right here, that little small itty bitty thing. Point 22, and said, but this is what the church is operating in now. Do you see that? And it's again, look at what he said. It, he said that we have lost much of what we gained in the early church. So he's saying that the early church used to walk in power used to have glory manifestations. Go and read in the, and just look at, not just in the book of Acts, but go and look at um, the church in Corinth. Go look at um, like the way, um, like these people just walked in incredible power. And even before that, the times of the Bible, I'm talking about Moses, Elijah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, there was power, but yet we don't see that so much in the body of Christ today. We don't see that. We can barely operate in the gifts of healing, let alone deliverance. Y'all missed that. 
But that's the babe level. Healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. And that's the babe level. That's the starter. The church ain't even walking full, fully in that. How in the world are we going to fulfill what Christ said? Christ said that these works even greater you will do. He said you will do greater works than what I did on the earth. When has the church even started doing something like that? The reason why is because they lost revelation. They lost something of crucial and great importance. Do you want to know what that is? I ain't going to give it to you if I don't see some exciting sighted people. If you if you came here just to receive a good word and, and just marinate in that, I'm sorry. You're going to be uncomfortable today. I want to see some uh, fiery, excited people. Because you need to understand the ways of the Lord. The more people kind of pump it out is the more I can give. <laughs> the Lord is not going to release certain revelations if you're not ready for it. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Right now, just say, Lord, give me revelation right now. So now let's move on. So then the spiritual father encountered a mighty man of God by the name of Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth and have powerful healing evangelist. His nickname was the Apostle of Faith. And so this man has 23 on record um, bringing people back from the dead. He walked in that miracle um, um, consistently. Okay. So this is what Smith Wigglesworth told him because he wanted to know how do we get back the power that we lost. How do we get back what we lost? This is what Smith Wigglesworth told him. Continue speaking to me. Go back and study the great men and women of God, for they possess a key element that the church has lost. God cannot do what he really wants to do with the church because they do not know their fathers. The church will not be what God wants her to be if they do not recover this. So part of DNA, part of your divine nature, in order for it to be activated, you have to understand that the reason why the scripture says that is because there is an inheritance that is in fathers. That's why the that's why the scripture uses those references. Look at what God said. God, when he introduces himself in the Old Testament, he does not say, I am the God of your mothers. He said, I am the God of your fathers, Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. Are you hearing this here? He said, I am the God of your fathers. Why? Because the inheritance is found in the fathers. The, this is why what this generation is doing is so wicked and so evil that it's trying to undermine the office and the respect of the fathers. That is demonic. That is satanic because the devil don't want you to realize how important fathers really are. Not just, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Not just in a household, but in ministry. Why? Because fathers lay up an inheritance. They're supposed to leave an inheritance. They're supposed to leave revelation or information. Otherwise, you would have to start from ground zero. Oh, who understands that? See, the reason why our airplanes are the way that they are today is because of the Wright brothers. The Wright brothers, actually, I'll go even a step further. Michelangelo tried to create a flying machine, but he couldn't figure it out. So then the Wright brothers took the inheritance and expounded on it. They made the, they discovered what is called the law of aerodynamics. It's because of them 
they laid a foundation, they left an inheritance that we can just, instead of us starting from scratch, we have an idea of how to at least make a plane work. But we are supposed to expound and go beyond it. Are you hearing this here? Nah, y'all ain't. I know I lost some people. The thing that God wants you to know and understand is that some of you are wondering, God has called you into certain ministries. God has called you to do a certain business. God has called you to do certain things. And the thing is, you're like scrambling and trying to figure out how to do this. But the thing is, if you go back, God is saying, go and look for the fathers. Go and look for someone. Look at how they did their business. Look at how they did their ministry. Because why? That is a foundation for you. You must understand that you have an inheritance. Somebody say, I have an inheritance. I want somebody to say that in, in, in the chat. You have an inheritance. And this is part of who you are. If you don't know that you have inheritance, how are you expecting to become rich in glory? How are you expecting to be rich in general? Why? Because how many of you know that when someone in your family pass, if you don't know, how will you receive an inheritance? They may have left you a whole bunch of money. Let's say they left you millions of dollars. But if you don't know, how do you collect it? Y'all, y'all miss that. Let me let me move on. Y'all church mice today. Holy Spirit, give them revelation. I know I'm probably coming a little heavy. Let me show you the danger of not knowing who you are and where you come from. Are you ready to know this? Because this might mess up some people. This is all part of your DNA, divine nature. Now, let's take a look at two prophecies, one in the old and one in the new. So God says in Malachi chapter four, verses five through six, he says, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Okay? So right there, that's in Malachi. All right? Now let's go to Luke chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. This is now Gabriel talking to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. This is him prophesying about his son, John the Baptist. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, I'm going to need some interaction from you guys. Look at that. Can we both agree that these scriptures are talking or confirming that Elijah is coming? And here it is. Gabriel is saying that the Elijah of which he's talking about is John the Baptist. Okay. Can we agree on that? Show of hands or thumbs up. Like this is, it's clear right there. So let me move on. 
Elijah is prophesied. Now, who are you? Now, this is in John chapter 1. Sorry. Verses 19. Now, look at this. This is the problem of not knowing who you are and what you have. Now, check this out. 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias or Elijah? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? Verse 23, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Now, take a look at this. For those of you who don't understand this, in, in Hebrew times, when you are under a prophet or something, they understood that. They understood lineage. And so what they would do, they would ask, who are you? Basically, what lineage are you from? Who are you studying under? Who are you learning from? Who are you? Because that lets us know what you walk in it. For example, Elijah, a lot of people read the Bible, they think Elisha was his only student. That is not true. Elijah had many students, but Elisha was the one that was closest and the one who received the inheritance. Are you hearing this here? In fact, um, Malachi said, I am not the son of a prophet, meaning he was saying, I did not inherit being a prophet. God made me one, but I did not live or study under one. Are you understanding that here? So that's why this is important. And this is why this is important for you to know this. Because if you don't know who you are, that's what the world is asking. That's what, that's what everyone is asking. They're asking us, the body of Christ, they're asking, who are you? How in the world can you show people who they are if you don't even know who you are? Let me go back. In Luke chapter 17, look at what he says. And he shall go before him, meaning Christ. He will go before the Christ in the spirit and power of Elias. Okay. So now let's go back to who are you? And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? So they're asking him, are you Elijah? Are you the one that Malachi talked about? Are you the one? Are you Elias? And he said, John said, I am not. He answered wrong. Because look at what in Luke chapter one, look at what Gabriel said. He will have the spirit and power of Elijah. The reason why John the Baptist had no miracles, he had part of Elijah's ministry, but he didn't have the fullness of it because he did not know who he was. He didn't know that it was his inheritance to do that. Because he answered right. He said, I am the voice crying out in the wilderness. He, he is right. He is that. But he didn't realize that he was the Elijah that was prophesied. Because it said he would have the power of Elijah. He had the ministry of Elijah. Down to even what he wore. He wore the same thing Elijah wore. He ate the same things Elijah ate. You must understand this. He was 
Elijah is preaching repentance, so is John the Baptist. They had the same ministry. So guess what? John the Baptist should have been walking in the same power Elijah had. He should have caused fire to come down from heaven. Everything that the Bible said that Elijah could do, John the Baptist could do. But because he did not know who he was, he lost it. He didn't operate in it. Are you understanding that? They asked him, are thou that prophet? What prophet? Not Elias. They're asking, are you the prophet that Moses prophesied then? If you're not Elijah, surely you must be the prophet that Moses said. Moses prophesied and said, there will be a prophet like unto me, meaning that there is a prophet that will look like me. He will walk in the same power and authority I have. And he said, I am not. So he's right. He's not that prophet, but he was Elias. If you don't believe me and you don't believe Gabriel, look at what Yeshua says. Yeshua confirms identity. Look at this in Matthew chapter 11, 13 and 14. For all the prophets in the Torah prophesied until the time of John. So that means everybody up to John the Baptist has been talking about me until I came. And when John showed up, I was to follow. And look at this. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah, who is to come. Elijah should have raised the dead. Why? Because Elijah raised the dead. John the Baptist should have caused droughts. He should have, he should have done a lot more in his ministry, but it was because he didn't know who he was. Right now, I want you to say, Lord, show me who I am. Do not make the same mistake John the Baptist did. Here it is. It was prophesied over him what he would be, what he would have. He's the one that didn't know. He's the one that he said, I am not Elias. And here it is. Yeshua said, he is Elijah. I want y'all to see something else. Let me move on. Now the mystery is going to be revealed. This is in Job chapter 8, 7 through 10. So it says, <clears throat> though thy beginning was small, Yet that latter end should greatly increase. How many of you want your latter end to greatly increase? It's not about how you start. It's about where you finish. Verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, meaning the ones who came before you. And listen to me, people of God. I am not just talking about um, in the Bible. I'm talking about an ancient right. You got to go back. You got to go look. You got to look at um, the mighty men and women of God. You like the thing is, and I'll tell you why, because look, I pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing because our days upon earth are a shadow. Even if you live a hundred years on the earth, it's a shadow. Now, this is why you have to inquire about the former age. Shall not they teach thee and tell thee in other words out of their heart, meaning their lives? The problem, the reason why we have so many churches, so many ministries that make the same mistakes over and over and over again, falling into the same traps over and over and over again is because they are not learning from the fathers who were before. You don't just learn their successes, you learn their failures. David even tried to tell that to Solomon. He said, look, you're about to become king. He said, pursue the heart of God and do not pursue anything else. Don't pursue, even if God blesses you, don't make the same mistakes I made. And you know what? Solomon made 
the same mistakes David made. But the thing was, if he would have listened to his father, he could have been even greater than David. Y'all missed that. David was trying to tell his son how to be greater than he was. Even though, yes, Solomon did, by listening to his father, he became wiser than his father because why? He was blessed with wisdom. They said there was no one like Solomon before or after. You, you must understand it. So he was wiser than his father. That means he was richer than his father. But the thing is, that's even more powerful. Did you know that David left an inheritance for Solomon? Saying not just with um wisdom, um, telling him how to obtain that wisdom to learn the ways of God, but he also got all the materials that Solomon would need to build the temple so that Solomon would not have to start from ground zero. I hope you are understanding this. It is demonic and wicked not to receive your inheritance. I'm willing to take it that far because it's that serious to God. You have such a calling and such a mighty thing that God has placed inside of you that you cannot ignore the fact that there were those who were before you that have knowledge that you need and now. And you are supposed to build upon it. Stop starting from ground zero all the time. Stop starting from ground zero. We are literally reinventing the wheel when our father has left us a Ferrari. Oh, I hope you understand that. Why would I have to make a car? And I'm not even skilled in that. I can learn how to make a car. I can learn the materials. Or I can receive a car that is already made and special designed for me. Which one makes more sense? To build a car or receive a Ferrari? If it makes sense to us in the physical sense, why doesn't it make sense in the spirit? The church is so lazy that they don't even know about any of the spiritual fathers. Because in their hearts, there's years worth of revelation, years worth of information. They touched places with God. I want that. It's my inheritance. Are you hearing this here? The reason why I have the relationship with God that I have is not because I pursued it from ground zero. It's because I learned what Moses did. I learned what Elijah did. I learned what Yeshua has done. I learned that I have access to my inheritance. And this is my inheritance to walk in miracles, to walk in signs and wonders, to walk in healing, to walk in deliverance, to walk in these things. It's my inheritance. This ministry is my inheritance. The kingdom is my inheritance. Y'all sleep. Y'all weren't ready for this Saturday. I'm almost done. I'm about to wrap this up in a tiny little bow. This is what the Lord wants me to leave you with. Because we talked about last time, Lord, show us your glory. Manifest your glory. We want to operate in your glory. Let me tell you something. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. Means that he hides certain things. But it is the glory of kings to search it out. That means that when you start to operate in this kingdom ministry, when you start to operate in the kingly authority, it is because, oh, I feel the glory of God right now. It is because you have searched 
and you researched. You started to learn from the lies to honor those who were before you. I'm literally walking in what I walk in now is because it is my inheritance. Right now, who wants who wants their inheritance? Because that's what God wants to release right now. If you really want to know more about your inheritance, this is what DNA is a part of. Yeah, I can pray for you. I can release certain things. And yes, I had to lay this foundation for this time because you have you have to understand that part of activating your DNA is to know the ones who were before you. is to know what they walked in and be like, if they walked in it or I can walk in it too. I receive my inheritance. I honor the fathers before me and I receive my inheritance. Are you understanding that here? This series is not just going to be me preaching and you guys are learning. You guys got to go and learn yourselves. You guys, I'm going to lay a foundation. I'm going to preach. But I ain't raising up no babies here. You need to go and do some studying yourself. Go and look. I promise you, it is so fun and so cool when you start to learn about the fathers and the saints before us and what they walked in and what they learned and how they encountered God and, and how they changed their nation, their generation, how they did it. Because why? That's what I'm supposed to have. Come on, somebody. I cannot be the only one excited. Everybody wants to talk about Oh, our country needs revival. Then go look at the revivalists. Go look at the ones who led the revivals before. But also look at not just what they did, but look at what they didn't do. Ask the Lord how to go beyond that. You are not, It is a shame if we leave this earth and Moses was the epitome of our Christian faith. Forget even Yeshua. We didn't even walk in what Moses walked in. It is not supposed to be that way. God intended. That's why he left us the Bible. See, and I got something to say. There's a lot of people who said, well, why do I need to read? Why do I need to do this? You really want to know why? Because God wrote books. In heaven, he has books. When he releases revelation or whatever, it's from a book. Why? Because there's wisdom in books. There's wisdom. He left us the Bible so that when we read it, we will see he's talking about us. And the ones before us, if they did it, so can we. We want to end human trafficking in, in, in the United States. Then learn from Moses. The one who liberated slaves. And learn from the ones who followed after him. Oh, we need divine encounter with the Lord. Learn from Elijah. He faced the prophets of Baal. Y'all missed that. I believe God is raising up people. I'm tired of Christians saying, oh, we don't want to mess with witches and warlocks. We don't want to mess with them. No, I want a power encounter with them. It's my inheritance to fight you. Your God versus my God. Let's go. To take atheists and make them believers. Let's take your pessimism against my faith. Let's go. Why? 
because it's my inheritance. Lift your hands in the Holy Ghost. I'm uh, I'm done right now. Huh. Did you all learn something? This is a this is just a little bit. Next time I'll talk more about your DNA, but I need you to understand. What are you supposed to walk in right now? But because you don't know. Has God given you a vision? Has God told you? I know some people right now. God has told them to learn from certain people in ministry. Why? And, and they asked me, um, you know, I'm going to put one of my friends. They, they, they put... Um, the Lord gave them a vision of a prophet and they were like, why was this prophet talking to me? Why was this prophet doing this? And I told them it's because God wants you to receive what they have. It's an inheritance. God is saying, go learn from them because what they walk in, you're going to walk in. And guess what? That person started walking even mightier in the prophetic. Why? Because they learned their inheritance. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm about to wrap this up. And I want everybody, thank you for coming and be a part of KPG Global, being part of our study. I'm about to wrap this up in prayer. But I just want all those that are watching wherever you are, I just want you guys to know that um, if you want us to come to your house and teach a seven-week Bible study, we can do that. Like, you don't just have to come here online. We will come to you, and we will have a paga. We will bring the glory of God. We will teach um, right in your household, in your church. We are located um, in, the, in um, southern Orange County, California. So... Um, and also we don't mind making travels. We don't mind going to other places as well. All you have to do is hit us up on our website, talk to us because we really just want people to engage the kingdom, walk in power and live in glory. That's really what we want. We want people to learn their inheritance. We want people to learn that, that God wants to release the riches of glory, not just have us going from glory to glory. So if you're interested in that and you want um, to talk with us, feel free to hit us up or um, at our website, kpgglobal.org. I'll put um, the link in the um, description as well. So yeah, feel free um, to just um, contact us. Amen. So right now, I just want to pray for y'all. I want to bless you. Because you know what? My time is done. But I hope you all learn something. And I hope you all will truly take this seriously and pursue the fathers. Just learn. And let that increase your faith. Amen. Let us pray. So right now, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, I just give you the highest praise, which is hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you for all those who are listening, all those who are here. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you will just touch them. And I pray, Lord, that you will just release um, right now, that you will open the gates of heaven and that you will release to them, Lord, speak to them by the Holy Spirit, show them um, their fathers, show them who um, they are to learn from, who they are to study from, from their lives, from their, um, from their business, from their ministry, whatever it is. Lord, that you will just show them and Lord, that you will give them a hunger and a desire to learn more about who you are and about who they are in you. And Lord, I just pray right now. I just release right now the kingdom of God. I release right now your love. I release your light. I release right now your fire. I release right now in the name of Yeshua. I just pray that you will just embrace them. Lord, right now, I release the atmosphere of heaven and I just release the kingdom of God right now. I command everything that's out of order to come back in order, to come in line with the kingdom and the authority of Yeshua right now. 
And Lord, I just by the rebuke all plans and schemes of the enemy, we cast it out. We send it back to the depths of hell. Every unclean thought, every um, spirit of trauma, everything of the like, we just cast it out now. And Lord, I just pray every insecurity and fear will be removed right now. And Lord, that you will just show them, show them how special and how wonderful that they are. Show them how much you love them. Show them that they have a purpose and a destiny far beyond that they could have ever even thought or imagined. I release that now. And I command right now, Lord, I pray that you will open the books in heaven, that you will align their lives on earth with what is written in heaven now and forevermore. I release that right now. Lord, continue to bless them. I release, Lord, grace and mercy. And Lord, just I pray at the end of this, Holy Spirit, continue to do the work. Lord, we love you. We adore you, we thank you, and praise you. We delight in you. It is in Yeshua's mighty and precious name we do pray by the presence of the Comforter, closest companion of the Holy Spirit. And my prayer partners and friends said with me because they believe, receive, and walk in it. Said amen, amen, and amen. This is Apostle Simba. I love you all, but remember, he loves you more. Take care and be blessed. We'll see y'all next time.